M1 Max 16? Let's do a day in the life. Google, shut up. Hey Google, shut up. Harbor Beach, 10 inches. That's way up tip of the thumb, Harbor Beach. We have a wind chill warning. My days usually start off around 6 a.m. I get myself situated. I grab some breakfast, which usually always consists of something that has eggs, and I head straight into my workout. If I'm running late, I grab a protein shake and I head out the door. Typically I rotate between lifting and basketball or even swimming since I do get bored very easily. My first workouts typically last 45 minutes to an hour, then I dive straight into work. Now depending on the day and what I have planned, I actually might start off the day with filming or scripting videos if it's set as a day for filming. If that's the case, then I shift my workouts to lunchtime, and this gives me a nice boost to my afternoons, which keeps me going throughout the day. Once that's figured out, then I like checking out the market just to see what's going on and what happened overnight in the overseas markets to help me get an idea of how I'm going to execute my trades for the day. Once I get a grasp on that, around 8 a.m., I dive directly into Notion to see exactly what I need to get done for the day. Notion has been life-changing for me, and using it makes life so much easier. Having all your to-do list, travel plans, scripts for videos and schedules of videos in one place makes it almost impossible to miss something. It keeps me organized and is the best thing I feel like that's ever been created for productivity. Not to mention being able to stop working on one device and pick up on another makes the whole process that much more seamless. If it's a day for filming, I use the next hour to take care of all my A roll and B roll for the next video I'm working on. Sometimes this obviously takes a bit longer and typically this process is done three days a week and I don't have a set schedule for it. Sometimes I film at night or on the weekends if I don't get a chance throughout the day. Weekends do make it much easier for me since I don't have to worry about the market or any of my other stuff I've got going on. So then around 9am I dive right into my emails and pharmaceutical work. Now I spend about an hour doing this to start the day and it doesn't really stop up until I finish. If there was a day trade or swing trade I was looking to get into, I'll typically execute that position after the market opens at 9.30, then I pretty much get back to pharmaceutical work until lunchtime. Now for reference, I started this test at around 100% this morning, 99 to 100%. We finished my first batch of emails and I haven't had any issues obviously. And typically I haven't had a day yet with the M1 Max where it hasn't made it throughout the whole day for me. That includes emails, video editing, and pretty much anything else I've got going on. Eight plus hours of workload and not once has the battery died on me. But I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride today so you can get an idea of how much it actually uses depending on what you're doing. Having the freedom is the most important thing for me. Some days I like working from the library, some days I'm in the studio, and some days I'm working from the game room. Finally, being able to work from anywhere without having to worry about if my laptop can handle a six or 8K video project has taken my thought and creative process to a whole nother level. Emails and typical work-related tasks along with the market don't really do anything to the battery life. It's Premiere Pro and Google Chrome that have been the main culprits for me. I know Safari is way less taxing on your Mac, but having Chrome sync everything for me with my Google accounts and different devices just makes things that much simpler for me and my everyday workflow. Now today's actually a little bit different. We're gonna head to the airport, we're gonna catch a flight to Miami, and I'm gonna take the M1 Max and you guys along with me to see how this actually handles pretty much everything else that I throw at it. Once I got to the airport, I focused up on catching up with some emails and bids that might have come through as well as making some important business calls before I hopped on my flight. Now battery life was very consistent up until this point. I was roughly at about 80% before I hopped on my flight. The M1 Max I'm rocking is obviously the 16 inch and it's fully spec'd out aside from storage. I went with the 2TB model which I feel like is plenty since I do like dumping my footage into a much larger server once I'm finished. I also would much rather spend the extra money on an external SSD that would let me move around different workstations based on what I'm actually doing. Now the overall shape and form factor is fantastic. I never really owned a much larger MacBook before, so having something this powerful that has an amazing screen to go with it makes it the perfect companion for pretty much anything. No longer do we need to live that dongle life. The battery life is amazing. 
three Thunderbolt 4 ports, MagSafe, and an HDMI port to go with an SD card reader that just gets rid of all that clutter and extra accessories we've had to carry around over the past few years. I've always wanted a mobile workstation that could handle a tough workload, six 8K video projects, whatever I threw at it. I tried the Razer Blade 15, I tried everything. Nothing did the job for me like my desktop would when I was on the go. The thought of not being actually able to complete any task doesn't even really cross my mind, and it's just as powerful, if not more powerful in certain scenarios than my desktop PC, which we'll cover on later in this video. When I got on my plane, I spent the next few hours catching up on work-related tasks and taking a break to edit some footage of my next project, and this laptop didn't even think about breaking a sweat. Sure, it's a bit larger, so it might take up a bit more space on your flights when you're working, but having a full-on workstation that can handle anything anywhere makes me overlook anything that I might not like about this laptop. And to be quite honest, there isn't much to dislike. The notch doesn't bother me. Its weight and size I've already become used to. Everything we've asked for, Apple gave us with this new monster, and I couldn't be happier. Once I landed, I went to grab some fire food at Bayside in Miami, followed by hopping on the Ferris wheel for some views. Now, I absolutely hate heights, so I decided to hop on the largest Ferris wheel I've ever seen, alone. This way, it rocks at the top and fully induces a panic attack. Seeing sharks off to the side only made matters worse. Once I got off, I tried not to throw up everything I ate before I headed back to the whip so I could go check into my hotel. When I got to my room, I settled into some dope views at one of my spots I'm always kicking it in when I come into town, while again, getting some work done. I soaked up every bit of sun I possibly could, seeing how I just barely missed a blizzard in Michigan a few hours before. All right guys, so we're out here. It's 5.45 p.m. right now, and as you guys can see, let me turn the camera around. We're about 36% on battery life. Now, we've got a beautiful sunset here. It is windy, so I don't know if you guys can hear me that well, but I wanted to mention that the battery life is being drained the most by Google Chrome, as you guys can see here. I'm actually scripting this video right now, finishing it up a little bit, doing some other stuff. I just didn't want to miss any talking points. But as you guys can see, pretty much got a beautiful view here just getting a little bit more work done here before we go get some dinner. And I put my laptop away. I hopped in the shower, got ready, and I headed up to Delray Beach to grab some tacos with my friend at this dope restaurant called Rocco's Tacos, followed up by checking out the largest Christmas tree I've ever seen. Over 100 feet tall, which makes this larger than the one in Rockefeller Center in New York, that I was also lucky enough to see a few weeks ago. After all this, I headed back to Miami and enjoyed the rest of my evening into the early Miami hours, where I started a similar process all over again. All right, guys, we're back from Miami, back in Michigan, where it's absolutely freezing. And I want to do one test for you guys in this game room. I wanted to go ahead and stack up the M1 Max against my insane desktop PC that I have behind me. This monster has a 5950X CPU, a 3080 Ti, and 128GB of RAM. And I want to see which one exports and renders a video in Premiere Pro faster. That it has a ton of transitions, color grading, 422 10-bit footage, complex footage off of the a7 IV with a ton of transitions and stuff all stacked up on top of each other it's absolutely a massive file and i want to see which one exports and renders the video faster so let's do that now all right guys so here we have both files we're going to start this and we're going to time both at the same time as you guys can see both files are the same same sequence same everything let's go ahead and hit export time both with a timer there. All right, now while we let these both do their thing and export and render this video, I wanted to mention one important factor. The M1 Max, I don't even hear the fans at all. I don't think I've ever heard the fans on the M1 Max spin up for me, like ever since I've had it. Meanwhile, my desktop PC, the fans have kicked in. They're going pretty fast and it's pretty loud. So keep that in mind. The M1 Max, th this is insane. You can't hear anything. Meanwhile, my PC over here is just Sounds like a vacuum cleaner. So here we have it, two minutes into the video. Two minutes into the export and both are at exactly 10%. This is crazy. Both are at, yeah. Both are at exactly 10%, 19 minutes, 19 minutes for the export on both of these. It looks like the uh, M1 Max, 40 seconds left. Oh man, this is, I, I mean, I expected it to be a lot closer than this, to be honest. There is no way the desktop PC is going to catch up to the M1 Max. Oh, it's done. 12 minutes and 56 seconds. 12 minutes and 56 seconds on the M1 Max. We're at 80% on the desktop PC. Oh, man, I'm so sick right now. 
all this money I spent on this desktop PC and it just absolutely destroyed it. It's still at only 82% for the desktop PC. So you guys can get an idea of just how powerful this M1 Max is. This build behind me cost, I don't know, I can't even imagine the graphics are 3,000, 2,000, almost probably $10,000. It's not, I mean, this isn't liquid cool like the other setups I've had in the past, but even if it cost seven or $8,000, that's double the price of the M1 Max and you can take this everywhere with you. So guys, I don't know, just absolutely insane. Both of these are insane machines. And to be quite honest, actually, I wanna be fair to the desktop PC because certain videos have exported faster than my M1 Max certain videos why have no idea but for this particular test the m1 max is at least at least 20 to 25 percent faster with this export and render there we have it boys full export 16 minutes 33 seconds so almost four minutes longer to export that particular video on the desktop pc which in itself i probably could use that time even though four minutes isn't a crazy amount of time if you're in a time crunch with deadlines, it makes all the difference, trust me, because in four minutes, you can fully upload and almost process a 4K video file on YouTube, depending on your internet speed, so. Minutes count. So there we have it, guys. M1 Max, Day in the Life. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. It was actually a ton of fun to make this video. This has been the perfect companion for me. I know it's overkill for probably 98% of people out there, but for creators like myself, it's the perfect addition to our lineup to help us take that next step when it comes to video editing and creativity. But I'm curious to know, have you guys picked up an M1 Max, M1 Pro? What's your experience been like with this laptop? Let me know down below where you'll also find links to everything that we covered in today's video. If you want to see more, go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Detroit Fury. And if you enjoyed this content, please make sure you smash that like button for me, subscribe. Turn on your post notifications, it really means a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace.